Why don't you start by telling us, because the original idea wasn't to annotate the entire world and, and be the knowledge about the knowledge for everything text. It was something uh, much more specific and personal than that. So let's hear about the original idea. Well, I was, I was explaining a uh, song from our favorite rapper, Cameron, who's a bit obscure, but what, what's interesting is the explanation that inspired the site, I actually got it incorrect. And I was I, I discovered my the mistake in my explanation through the community. So. And what was your explanation? Oh, it was about it was about Jamaican clothes. <laughs> I guess I didn't realize that in Jamaica mesh tank tops are very are very popular. So that's why you know a lot of times we tell people 99% of rap genius is lies. You know the what what we're going after is not the truth. We're going after uh, building a social network around people's favorite texts and. People can interact on the text and comment on one another's explanations and uh, they can go on dates based on their rap genius interactions. It's, it's like an intellectual version of OkCupid. <laughs> so, so how did explaining mesh t-shirts expand to explaining everything? So like, uh, you know, it started out, it was just basically like Tom was the sort of technical genius of the three of us and um, Mappo and I were doing a lot of writing and analyzing rap. And uh, a couple weeks into the project, Mappo was like talking about, we're gonna explain all of rap. And I was like, you're always so annoying and unrealistic, and this is gonna take a thousand years for us to do. He's like, no, we're gonna do all of rap. And, and he was absolutely right. It took about a year and a half to two years to get basically like all of the rap canon up on the site. And the way that happened was, um, you know, people would read a, a rap, uh, read some lyrics, uh, click on some lines, and they'd be like, wow, this is an interesting experience. I'd like to contribute to this project. And sort of little by little, a couple people at a time, we'd invite people into the community. And before we knew it, you know, six months in, seven months in, we had 150 or so people really actively writing and contributing. And it sort of started to swell. It became unmanageable as a sort of invite-only thing. And we decided to change it and make it open wiki style, uh, give people points, uh, create different editorial levels for contribution. And uh, once we did that, the content started going up like crazy. And instead of one or two songs a day going up, uh, you have 10, 15, 20. And instead of having to make some effort to put up a new album, uh, people are competing for the opportunity to put up new songs. So now pretty much anything that's new uh, goes up and, and everything in rap history is annotated. If you think about it, the Bible is hip hop. You know, Shakespeare is hip hop. All all musical language needs to be broken down line by line. It, it all uh, lends itself to close reading. And how do you, so if you compare uh, what's going on with Rap Genius to kind of the great uh, historical annotation, the Talmud, which did annotate um, the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible, uh, how do you see the similarities and the differences from the ancient interpreters who wrote the Talmud? Well, this is, this is maybe a bit more democratic, and that's, that's thanks to technology, but it comes from the same uh, need. I think there are texts that are important to people, uh, texts that sort of, you know, people can talk about, you know, th texts that th people have in common. And obviously, you know, uh, a long time ago, uh, the Torah uh, was really important, but no, it was full of contradictions, full of complicated stuff, uh, full of weird imagery, and people needed someone and something to sort of mediate that and, and make sense for a community. And the same thing happens with rap, you know, like some rap comes out and people want to have a sense of like there's a place where we can uh, can draw out the meaning of that thing. And so I think it's really the same impulse, impulse the Talmud, exactly. It's just a better technology. There's a hierarchy to it as well. You know, we have our rabbis are the editors and moderators, and our arch rabbis are the verified artists like yourself, whose names are in green. And, you know, a lot of people now are referring to the Talmud as Rap Genius 1.0. So I don't know what to make of that. There are no cute pics, though. That's another big problem with the uh, Talmudic explanations. You know, like, uh, that's, and you, know, you can't see it with this explanation that's up right now, but a big part of what makes the experience so magical is you can be going through a song, you know, and then you will see like, okay, the chorus of this song was actually a sample from this other song, and then boom, explanation opens, you can play that video, you can read, like you can see the picture of the other artist, so, you know, it's sort of like, you know, it's very much like Wikipedia in the sense that you can sort of go down a rabbit hole, going from like connection to connection between songs, and uh, the Talmud uh, was pretty good, but wasn't quite there yet. The, in the terms great of rabbi Rambam would often express his frustration at not being able to put animated GIFs in the Talmud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm joking, but he probably would have. You know? just, it's, it, it allows us to mix the right brain and the left brain. It allows us to bring the ADHD mentality back to text. 
So uh, you talked about verified artists and talk a bit about, because one of the things that, that uh, is striking about the site is when a song first goes up, the explanations are not what one would consider canonical or definitive, they're more sort of random. But then within a week, um, you get to the, the canonical, the correct, the best explanation, the best known explanation. Um, and how do the verified artists, the ranking system, the platform work to, to create that answer? Well, th there's a couple questions in there. One is just how does it get better over time? And that's just this natural process of people visiting and seeing something's wrong and feeling that itch of I want to correct it. And also we have this communication infrastructure on the site. So if I go and leave an explanation on a line and someone else comes in and makes a comment or edits that, I'm going to be notified in real time. So I'll return to it and say, aha, that's good. Or maybe that's bad and I'll delete that. And that communication infrastructure leads to kind of improvement over time. Uh, the artist thing is, is very interesting because, um, you know, there are really only a couple things that artists use to talk to their fans and they're, they're incredible uh, and they've changed the way artists and, and people relate and that's basically Twitter and Instagram and we are sneaking in and becoming the third thing there. Every major rap artist, almost, with the exception of a couple, uh, has a verified account where they come in and they analyze their lyrics and they interact with fans and they reach their top fans. And what's interesting about Rap Genius versus Twitter and Instagram is uh, uh, Instagram and Twitter are not really writing on the wall of history. Uh, whereas if you have a song, you have a piece of art, uh, and you make some commentary, this thing's going to be alive in a hundred years, a thousand years when people think about uh, your work. And that pitch to artists is very compelling and it can help overcome uh, what happens for a lot of technologies that could be appealing for artists, which is that, you know, it's hard to use, it's not as, you know, immediately obvious as Twitter, Instagram. Uh, but the artists are so compelled to kind of contribute to this uh, historical document of their own work uh, that, that we're overcoming that. And so artists now in mass are really starting to use Rap Genius. It's really exciting. Twitter and Instagram are the, are the television, and Rap Genius is the curated art museum. It's just, it's, it's uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Twitter and Instagram. But. The art museum with points, though, you know, like I like, it's important to have both sides of it. You need to have the wall of history spiritual pitch, but there's also a very big aspect, which is just like, where are my points? And I want more points. Give me more points. And so, like, that is a big part of the way Rap Genius works. You know, if you do a good explanation, you, you know, you moderate the site well, you delete bad stuff, you, you improve other explanations, you will literally get points. And, you know, like, Mobboat is, is very much uh, the more spiritual side, represents the more spiritual side. He's always telling contributors, like, you know, Rap IQ is just a metaphor. It's really about the wall of history. And I'm always telling people, get more points. You got to get more points. So, also, you need that interplay. People are using Rap IQ like Bitcoin now, like online. Online, people are using it to trade for, for you know, drugs and things like that. So, <laughs> I'm joking. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's just a metaphor. Rap IQ is just a metaphor. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you explained that as a joke. Um, so, you know, you kid about the Bible, but the Bible, of course, is like fundamentally important to so many people's lives, and they have such a deep emotional connection to it. And one of the really important things about the Talmud was that it actually enhanced that relationship. The people's relationship, the, the relationship that people had with the Bible was enhanced. You know, uh, an apple and a talking snake became original sin. And, and this is very important into the, the uh, respect with which the Talmud treated the text and made it so powerful. And this is also true of uh, rap lyrics and poetry and, and, uh, and the other things on the site. And one of the things that, that really struck me about this is uh, a T.S. Eliot poem, The Road Not Taken, went up, which is my wife's favorite poem in the world. And she uh, was the valedictorian in her high school, and it was part of her high school speech. And so when it went up on Rap Genius, I thought, well, I hope <laughs> that what is ever on Rap Genius doesn't detract from that experience and doesn't detract from that relationship, but enhances it. And uh, the great thing was that it did. And how do you go about uh, with the guidelines, with how you uh, run the site, to make sure that when people go to experience the works that they love and really influence their lives, that that experience uh, doesn't make things worse, but makes it better? Well, we have, uh, we have some tools built on the site that help people who are passionate about it and people who are intelligent 
become good moderators of the content. So uh, the very, very top moderators have like a big red button we can press, which if we find a user who's leaving a lot of bad explanations, we can just nuke that user completely uh, and their contributions are gone. Uh, so that gets rid of a lot of bad stuff. But the, but the primary thing is, uh, is starting with us and then the few people who uh, were invited at first. Uh, there are moderators, there are editors, and there are regular contributors, and they can all do different things with one another. Uh, and we try to communicate as best we can through a set of guidelines, but also through just informal communication and sending messages and feedback, uh, what kind of stuff you're supposed to encourage and discourage. Uh, and it's really just community policed. You know, the people who are passionate about uh, tending to the, to the garden of Rap Genius are really passionate about it, and they, they do most of the work. And that, a lot of that comes from Mothboat at the top. I gotta say, Ms. Horowitz, I beg you, you have to get a verified Rap Genius account. <laughs> I'm asking you at the LD, you gotta explain the road not taken. Also, I'm sure you can, you can shed a lot of uh, light on Ben's blog posts, you know? <laughs> also, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's how do you attract the right people to the right text, you know? Like, you, it needs to be explained by someone who, you know, is, is, is an expert, someone who's got the passion rather than someone who's just, like, driving by. And so that's, like, it's baked into our whole, like, product design philosophy, you know? Because if you, like, visit the site for the first time, you know, you might think, like, oh, there's some rough edges on here. Like, you know, why isn't this, like, a flashier designer? And, you know, a lot of that stuff's coming, and we want to perfect that. But the reason is that we spend all our energy trying to optimize the experience for the people who are creating the content. And so once you log in and go inside the whale, then you see a whole different world of things popping and moving around. And so, like, that is what you have to do if you are building a crowdsourced website. Like, you can't optimize for the first-time use of a drive-by user, even though you want that to be good. You've got to just spend all your time massaging the feet of the people who are passionate about the texts. So we talk a lot about you know, things like Wikipedia being the knowledge, and then Rap Genius containing the knowledge about the knowledge. Talk a little, if you can, about what is the importance, as you see it, of the knowledge about the knowledge, kind of both on current works and historical works. Well, you know, the, the philosophy, we all, we were all friends at Yale and, you know, at, at Harvard and Stanford, they do a much better job of teaching you to be powerful. All we learned at Yale was to do close reading and to, to analyze, <laughs> analyze text line by line. And that, that's the, that's the purpose of Rap Genius. It's not just about a text. You have to explain it line by line, unless you can engage with it word for word, the way that you do in a college poetry class, then there's nothing you can do with the site at all. Also, it's just, you know, everybody has the experience of being very distracted by how much information is out there and, you know, reading BuzzFeed articles or whatever. And, you know, it's just, it's nice to be part of something that is moving the collective, like, attention span uh, in, I think, a more healthy direction, which is to spend more time with something, uh, to spend five consecutive seconds thinking about one thing deeply as opposed to spending five seconds clicking 11 times on something. So um, it's sort of in a way it's fighting against the general current of the internet to spread a bunch of shallow information all over the place. Um, and, you know, we think it's important. That's why we have the animated GIFs. It makes the close reading fun. So you started this out um, as a way to explain a single a single song, a single line that became a single album, that became all of rap, that became all of everything. And it really started as a mission, but then became a company. So tell us a little bit about what's that like, your mission turning into a company, and all the things that a company implies from raising money, from untrustworthy venture capitalists to uh, stock options and paying people salaries and all these things. Take us through that journey a bit. Oof, I mean, it was Sorry, a it's a curveball question. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's <laughs> a good right question. Blank stairs. I mean, for me, it was, it was, it's, it's a crazy, it messes with your head, you know, because like we, we, things really started to take off for Rap Genius, the company, when we did Y Combinator in the summer of 2011, which was, you know, just pouring gasoline on the whole situation. And so like, it was just the bizarre experience because by the end of Y Combinator, we were all very excited about our prospects. We had a bunch of investors who were very excited. But like, from my perspective, like I was just thinking nothing has changed from four months ago. The site is the same, you know, the concept's the same. The site has gotten better, of course, but like the fundamental juice behind the site 
you know, it was the same. And yet four months ago, the world, you know, qua, did not really care about Rap Genius qua business. So, like, it was just a bizarre experience to go from, like, you know, the world doesn't care about you, doesn't care about your site, and you're kind of fine with that. And then it's basically the same site, and now people are starting to, you know, give you all this money, and uh, it was great. It was crazy. And ben, you're the, you're the godfather of Rap Genius, you know? We don't just consider yeah. you a Uncle Moneybags. You're, <laughs> you're, you're a spiritual yeah. force behind the site, and I think that's part of why we've blown up so huge and, and it c contributes to our success. I mean, at this point, you, you have more rap IQ than Max Herre, who's one of the biggest <laughs> German rappers. But yeah, I'm not I mean, as good a rapper. It's just, you know, it's, uh, in some ways it's an amazing learning experience to do the company thing. In some ways it's kind of a tragic experience because you can't always uh, dwell in the mission type emotion and, um, and motivation and action. You know, you can't, you can't do that because you've got to sort the stock options out. And that sometimes feels kind of tragic, but also there's just some truth to the way that money is the lifeblood of some of this energy. Uh, and we can get more people involved and, you know, if we didn't have you know, and this is also kind of tragic, but if we didn't have the money, we wouldn't be able to have all these wonderful uh, young collaborators uh, that we're working with who are brilliant technically, brilliant uh, in, in the spiritual sense, and so you sort of take some of that on, uh, the stock options, et cetera, so that you can have all these collaborators. Okay, final question, another curveball. Uh, if you could each give us one line on Rap Genius and explanation uh, that you're very proud of, happy about, interested in? Uh, the, the one that comes to, to mind is uh, Gucci Mane says that rock star lifestyle might don't make it. And, you know, he's basically saying that it's like Thrasymachus' statement in uh, Plato's Republic, where he says, you know, perhaps might does make right. <laughs> of course, it's linked back to the Republic now, which is also now being explained on Rap Genius. Awesome. Uh, I... Uh, uh, I'll also give another Gucci Mane line where he says, um, uh, what is it, it's um, uh, back to the basic, party on the bracelet, mill full of ice in these player haters faces, mill full of ice, Gucci Mane, good gracious, got a sick flow when I think of contagious. <laughs> it's just a great line about not listening to haters and just, you know, throwing your ice in their face and, uh, you know, it's, it's tough because like once you uh, sort of you know, it's, it's in, in the beginning, no one cares about you, and also you don't have any haters, but then you sort of get haters, and you just got to learn to love the haters. It's a paraphrase and, uh, of Lil Flip's big ups to all my haters. Uh, I, I love them. Jesus said something similar to that as well. Love all them. Just the only, the only publication I can't get down with, even after all loving the haters, is the New York Times. I can't. <laughs> they're the only one I have beef with, like, at the basic level. But everyone else I love. They're, just, they're Carlos Slim's ho. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, I, I don't know. A bunch of lines are, are, are flying through my head. I don't know if there's anything in particular, but uh, DLD, DLD flew us out here business class. You get to recline almost the entire way. Uh, almost, just a little bit tilted. But so I was thinking of Soldier Boy says, uh, so much money, I valley park my bicycle. And that's kind of how I feel about <laughs> Ben and our recent come up. Uh, that we're just balling, you know, it's a lot of fun, but uh, keep it real. Juice, juice, juice. <laughs> Thank you so much. We really appreciate being here.